So, so Pokemon is a game that teaches children how to enter into the world of witchcraft, how to cast spells, how to use psychic phenomena, how to put work supernatural powers against their enemies, how to fantasy role play. Pokemon world is a world of the demonic, of the satanic. But while you might not take it quite seriously, I assure you that demons take it quite seriously. <laughs> You know, people frequently can't see the rock that they're standing on for the horizon. You know, it's the obvious that many people miss is that we're part of a social species. And you have no more choice about it than you do over which gases you breathe. It's biologically hardwired. This is why being with people feels good. And being with people you like feels really good. You know, being with your friends and having important friends feels even better. Conversely, being separated from people feels bad, which is why solitary confinement is such a devastating punishment. It is therefore unsurprising that one of the most common emotional fantasies runs along these lines, that there's this really big, really powerful guy. Eh, it's a fantasy. Why not get a whole hog? There's the most powerful guy ever, a god no less, and he likes me. He thinks I'm special. He thinks I'm so special he wants to be my friend, and to love me forever, and that makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Eh, I'll let this guy explain. And that thought just staggered me to think that the God of the universe could love me, Bill Craig, that worm down there on that speck of dust called planet Earth. I just couldn't take it in. Yep, that's right. In the absence of real powerful friends, the fantasy of one, one that has no evidence that it actually exists, can still feel really good. And sure, you can get real highs out of such fantasies. I felt this tremendous infusion of joy, like a balloon being blown up and blown up until it was ready to burst. Now I should stress that emotional fantasies are pretty much as varied as sexual ones, and the emotional payout is real. It really does make you feel warm and fuzzy inside. But please, be honest with yourself. What you are doing is emotional masturbation. And in this picture, the preachers and the holy books are just the masturbatory age. You know, the things to give the fantasy some depth and color, to enhance the heart. That's the fire of God. That's the fire of God. They're not actually the source of the warm, fuzzy feeling. That's your biological need to be with people. But it does make it easier for people who want to get off on such fantasies to indulge. Yep, that's right. The preachers and the holy books are the pawn of emotional masturbation. And just like the porn industry, there's a hell of a lot of money to be made in the Oh, hallelujah, brother, doesn't it feel good? type masturbatory aids. Now, I've got no problem with people stroking their emotional happy spots. None whatsoever. No, really. Whatever blows your skirt up, whatever you do in the privacy of your own mind is entirely your own affair. I mean, let's be real. Loving someone and having them love you in return are some of the nicest, warmest feelings you can have. And the indulging in such emotional fantasies can be very pleasurable. I will never doubt again. There will never be a need. And if you like it, sure, knock yourselves out. Please, follow the golden rules that go with all masturbation. Don't do it all the time. Don't do it in groups. Don't do it in public. And most of all, for God's sake, don't try and do it with children. Say, God, God. I'm here to be trained. I'm here, to be trained. I'm, here I'm here for an education. I'm willing, God. I'm willing, God. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll say what you want me to say, in Jesus' name. You start trying to do it in public or in groups or trying to get kids involved in this sort of thing, in trying to convince people that in exchange for these warm, fuzzy feelings, this fantasy wants you to wear silly hats or hate fags or pray for rain or tell old ladies to throw their heart medicine on stage because God will heal them, or stone people to death for picking up sticks, or behead witches, or start wars, or, or to suggest that babies, 
babies slaughtered at the end of a sword in God's name were actually the recipient of an infinite good. If you believe, as I do, in the salvation of infants or children who die, what that meant was that these, the, the death of these children meant their salvation. They were the recipients of an infinite good as a result of their earthly phase of life being terminated. Then reality merchants such as myself will piss all over those nice, warm, fussy feelings that you get. Not out of anger, not out of intolerance, not even because I want to spoil your emotional highs, but for the sake of a better tomorrow for mankind.